Good morning, Miss Carissa. We hadn't started yet. We were just chit chatting, but hey, <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting ready to Good start. Morning. Um, you know, it's ten o two. I like to be on time, so it's just it's just us right now. I'm sure some others will probably join us at some point, but let's go <clears> ahead <throat> and get started, y'all. Okay. <clears throat> um, you know, infection control okay. was supposed to be our topic today. <clears throat> but of course, if it's anything else that y'all have that y'all want to talk about, we can't, <clears throat> we just kind of flow. But um, I have my book out and I know, like I was saying, the last meeting, infection control has kind of, it kind of, um, I won't say changed, but I'll say it's not as long mm -hmm. as it was. Like they took some of the stuff out of infection control and moved it around to some other places like some of the stuff is in the healthy professional chapter that we just okay. finished last week and then some of the stuff has just been it's just been moved around a little bit some of the stuff has been taken out like they don't have the bacterias and stuff that used to be in the old milady book that yes I oh that's my noticed, favorite part yeah, <laughs> they, don't have, they don't have it in there no more so like i guess we don't have to go as in depth about the types of bacteria and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, so I know I was I like that too because I think it's fun. Some of the activities that we would do. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Gray, how are you? I'm great. Good. We are just getting started. So we're talking about infection control. We have our our new Milady books out. And we're just getting ready to start doing some planning for infection control. What's your name? I'm Tanya Martin Hicks. Okay, nice to meet you. Thank On you Facebook, I'm T Martin. T. Yes, yes, I figured. Okay, I okay. figured. Okay, so um, let's get into it, y'all. So the first thing, the first objective in the book is the just explain infection control. And it's like uh there's like the basic vocabulary and then like EPA, OSHA, you know, the federal and state regulatory agencies like normal. And so explaining the infection control, you remember in the old book, mm -hmm. was it the three methods? Um, like sen um, cleaning, sanitizing, and um, disinfecting. Mm -hmm. Disinfection and uh, sterilization. Okay. Uh -huh. It's still in there. Okay. Yeah. I, ha I haven't had a chance to read, kind of read through chapter five. Yeah, movie. that's definitely still in there. So, um, what type of stuff do y'all normally do, or do you? What do you do with your students during infection control? Like, I know for me, I want to make infection control more interesting, more <laughs> engaging, you know? Well, I usually, um, in the beginning, um, talk about, um, well, I kind of give a, a brief introduction. And uh, we go ahead and um, jump on <clears throat> barbicide, and I let them do the barbicide certification. Mm-hmm. And um, so they once they go through the the uh, exercise in the, I think it's a test of, like an assessment attached to it or something. Mm -hmm. And um, I print out their certificate. Okay, so barbicide training slash certification is something you. Do. I kind of you know in hopes of that kind of get them a little excited about you know what's coming up in um infection control. Okay. Okay, what I do is I order some petri dishes, there's some plain agar plates, and I just let them swab everything in the classroom, let that grow for a week or so, and just to let them see how nasty everything is that they're sitting <laughs> on, their seats, their cell phones, their um, yeah. computer, laptops. And their heads on that. their books. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, yes, everything. So I kick it off with that and they're scared as hell yes <laughs> Put and everything so after that I'm glad you said that because that's literally what I wanted to do. Like I was thinking, how can I do this? So you have a you have microscopes in your class? 
No, we don't have microscopes, but you can still see everything that grows on it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you get? So you get this plain, this a plain blood auger uh, tray. How you spell it? I, I I'm not understanding. Blood, blood. like blood, blood. And oh, auger, okay. auger, a g a a r. Okay, blood auger tray. Hold on one second. Okay, <laughs> she said blood auger tray, right? Is that what she said? I think so. I, I think I know. I've seen them on um Amazon. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to look into it. It's like the bacteria growth. Um, kit or something like that, I think. Okay, so a blood auger tray and petri dishes, and then let them swab everything. I want to do that, I'm gonna do that uh, this year. And I was thinking about, um, actually, I am when I uh, return back to school, when I do my first order, I want to at least um, try to order um, at least maybe three microscopes. Yeah, we have, so I know we have one, we have two. Mm -hmm. in our class but we ain't never used them <laughs> really <laughs> we have two one is actually still in a kit like brand mm -hmm. and then we have one like a real you know like that they mm -hmm. use in the science labs but i don't have a clue how to use it <laughs> so maybe i can get with the science department yes, and, that's um, what I, was I was thinking about too. taking them and then we can get out the classroom take them to the science exactly. department exactly so, Okay, so <clears throat> so um you said blood auger tray and petri dishes. That's pretty much all I need. And then what do you have right. them to swab with? Like q tips or something? Yeah, I gave the I got q tips and they just swab the uh q tips. Okay. They swab like some some people swab their hair, you know, like their scalp. Uh -huh. Um I had a certain group do their um their Chromebooks. Uh -huh. I had them do um, their cell phones, especially, you know, yes. because they're always on the phones. Yes. Okay, so, so once they once they swipe them, so how do I, I know I'm being a little extra, but I'm no, just no, no, you're okay, you're okay. So okay, so they swab, use the Q-tip, and then what do right. they do? They swab. Um, okay, so I had them too, right? You know what? I'll send you pictures and everything. Okay. When yep. after the Zoom. Yeah, so that I'm would be about, great. But I'll send it. I'll send it to you, and I'll I'll include the link as to what <laughs> um trays to get. Mm -hmm. And then, so all they did was is they swab the area, mm -hmm. and then you, after you do it, whatever you're swabbing, you put that you swab the tray, and you lift the lid off, and you swab it. I, of course, put their names and everything on it. Okay. And then I collected them. I made sure that they were closed. Uh huh. And I collected them. And I put them in my office for about uh, a week or so. See you later, Mona. About a week or so. And then you can and see then, it. Girl, it's <laughs> amazing. Oh, I can and imagine. I'll, I'll send you pictures of the finished ones because I do have a picture of those too of how they looked. Okay. After, um, yeah. Oh my God. That sounds good. That I love that. I wanted to do that, but I I didn't know that you could do it without like a microscope. In my mind, I was like, we gotta have microscopes and all this. <laughs> no. no. Okay. Yeah, you, that's amazing. Yeah, you can definitely it. see them. You can definitely see them. Yep. Hey y'all! I'm so glad y'all jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> how are y'all today? Hello, hello. Great. How are you? Hey. I am, um, we're talking infection control. We just started not too long ago. So we're just sharing some ideas of things that we like to do to um, get infection control started. And so <clears throat> one thing that we said was the barbicide training. And then another thing was just the swab. So that's what um, she just got done talking about is doing the blood agar tray i never had even heard of it but like you swab have your <laughs> students to swab different things and then swab the tray and let the bacteria grow for a week or so and then they can really see you know the growth of bacteria and stuff so i think that is a good idea i wanted to do that so that's awesome i'll make sure i send everything yes perfect and i'll put it on the presentation i need to upload these presentations somewhere i haven't uploaded not one of them <laughs> <laughs> so i'll upload i'll make it my business to upload the presentation so y'all can have the information i'll just put it like in the if i can figure out how to put it on the files on our group 
then I'll just put it there and I'll just label them by the uh, chapter. And so you can just go back and look like that in the group. Perfect. That's a good idea. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> okay, y'all. Um, anything, anything else, y'all? Y'all know right off the back that you do before we start trying to get real creative and make up stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm driving right now, so I'm just going to be listening. It's okay, that's perfect. That's cool. Um, let me see. I know there's something that I do. It's not as, you know, nothing like that. But one thing that I do, like when we get to direct and indirect transmission, that kind of gets them interactive, just like as a little quick check type of idea. <clears throat> let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Let me see if I can find it. I'll be basically what I'll do is I have some pictures up. So I'll put, um, I have them like on either get a whiteboard and marker and they, I have those small whiteboards that they can turn. So I have them write directs or indirects on one side and the other side. And then I'll just let them, I'll pull pictures up on my screen and I just want them to tell me, is this direct transmission? Is this indirect transmission? And so I just let them I like that. a mm -hmm. little game like that. I also let them do that mm -hmm. for like um single use and multi-use items. When we get to that section, I'm putting uh -huh. pictures of cotton balls, you know, or different items. Can you use, is this single use or is it multi-use? So I have them do that for that as well. Um, making sure they understand the difference between single use and multi-use and also porous versus non-porous. Because, you know, sometimes they get confused with yeah. porous items versus non-porous items. Mm -hmm. So I'll show them, you know a foul or whatever is this porous or non-porous and i just let them kind of hold it up and and test them like that so that's one thing that i do as a little quick check before we move on when we're doing that that was real good um the uh multi-use and single use that's that's always a good yeah subject even you know like in the nail section because Mm -hmm. They want to reuse things that mm -hmm. they're not supposed to reuse. Mm -hmm. so exactly. That's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. So mm -hmm. I know, okay, so let me ask y'all this, because I know that things differ per state. In Texas, like for nail fouls, even the, what would be considered a porous nail foul, they can be reused as long as we have to spray them with Marvicide, scrub them with like a, a clean and disinfected nail brush, of course, as long as they haven't been exposed to any breaking of the skin, blood, body fluids. So is that is Are that you the talking same about like thing? the emery board? Uh, no, like not not just the little flim. Oh, the, the metal one. Not the metal one though. The like actual the, like nail files for real, like the not the little flimsy. I know exactly. Right, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, just a regular abrasive. A hard plastic one, like. Let me pull it up because I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> just let me I show you. I think I know what you're talking about. No, you're talking about like the 180 grits and all that. Yes. Stuff. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that is that like for y'all? I've, I've heard I've heard of it. I've seen people, you know, like spray it with some sea breeze or alcohol or something, and then reuse it, but. Um, we're not, we're just having them just toss them. Okay. Yeah. Unless they're mm -hmm. using it on themselves, mm -hmm. we just have them toss it. Yeah. Because yeah. once you, once you begin to like do anything that's, you know, they, they're going to want to continue it. So right. yeah, we just yeah. say, forget it. Just toss it. Exactly. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. These are the ones I'm talking about, though. Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. like yes. Yes. Here. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I just I was just curious because, like I said, even like these are like buffers in Texas. <clears throat> in our law book, it says, you know, even though we teach them typically and out of the book, it's like these are porous and you dispose of them. But in right. the law book, it does say, you know, as long as they haven't broken the skin or been exposed to anyone's blood or body fluids, you can spray them with disinfectant spray, not just alcohol or not just, you know, it has to be disinfectant spray and scrub them real good with a brush and let them dry and then reuse them. Yeah, so yeah. and some of them, some okay. of them, yeah, some of them actually say, um, 
um, non um, that like you can use them again, reusable. Right. Yeah. yeah, some of them actually stay it on them. Right. Okay. I was just curious. Okay. Especially um, if they're using them on like acrylic nail tips. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. I think stuff they like that. Be okay. Yeah. Yeah, and what I um did with my students um last last season is I told them if they keep it in a Ziploc bag, put their name on it, and they can have, mm. you know, use it on themselves. Exactly. You know, if they wanted to. Yeah. 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 And that's what Instead we of tossing them mm -hmm. um, all the time. Yeah. Like, even when we go through, um, <clears throat> like, pedicures and, like, all of that type of stuff with manicures, like, once we uh, give them a foot foul, we're like, this is your foot foul for mm -hmm. you. So whoever, whoever, whatever student is assigned to do your pedicure that day, they're going to use your foot foul on you. But it's just to help us not be so wasteful yeah. because we go through so many of them. So unless it gets raggedy or, you know, it, when it's time mm -hmm. to replace it, of course, we'll give them a new one. But <laughs> if they can reuse it, reuse this on yourself. <laughs> yeah. For sure. It makes more sense. Yeah. I hate wasting stuff. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. That's good. That's some good little quick side note information. Um did y'all see? So in the new book they have the little I like this little page where they have the That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> yes, they have the disinfectants and just kind of like mixing disinfectants. I think that's really good. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you all go about making sure that all of your students know how to properly mix Marvicide? Because, you know, we assign duties and stuff, but, like, do y'all have them? Like, well, I doing? usually take them through that during the Marvicide training oh. when I do that certification. Yeah, so okay. We kind of go through all of that. Yeah. And then kind of revisit later on just to make sure. Because, you know, they see it one time and then we don't do it. If they don't do it again, they're going to forget how to do it. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> okay, y'all. So how do y'all go about, like, do y'all do any type of little different type of activities when it comes to teaching, like, you know, fungus, bacteria, viruses, parasites? Is there anything in particular that y'all do with your students to go over this information? I usually do a COVID-19 um, kind of, the last thing I did, they did like a COVID-19 uh, research and okay. um, with detail. They had to um, provide um, illustrations, uh, information about COVID-19 bacteria, you know, things like that. And um, then I had them present it. Okay. So, so do y'all cover all of the information that I guess I'm trying to see, like, how do y'all break down the infection control chapter? Like, are you focused on bacteria and then, I mean, do y'all cover it all in one thing or do y'all, like, break it down? Like, we're going to cover bacteria. Our focus is bacteria right now. Do all of your bacteria stuff and then go on to viruses and do all mm -hmm. of that stuff. And do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how do y'all break down the chapters? I mean, this chapter in particular, break down the sections. So I always start with like the, um, the state agencies mm -hmm. because those questions mm -hmm. come up on their state board exam and right. they always don't know which agency does what. So I have them do like a little mini research on what the state agency, what each state agency is responsible mm -hmm. for. So we start there. And then we move into the bacterias. We break down all of the different bacterias. And I, they. <clears throat> yeah, we were just talking about that because they took the bacterias out. It's not even in the book no more. <laughs> That's, and that was one of my favorite parts. I, yeah. I, I love the test of bacteria. <laughs> yeah. But it's not in the. I mean, of course, the bacteria section is still in the book, but the. The, how we used to have the staphylococci, streptococci, mm -hmm. all day. It's not, it's not in the book no more. It's not? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They just got the, Sorry. they just kept the, the two types of bacteria, which is, you know, pathogenic and non-pathogenic. Mm -hmm. They took the classifications so, out. 
Yeah, because I do a candy thing with with the bacteria, yeah. and yeah. I think yeah. so the, the, the like the Mike and Ike's and mm-hmm. the um, mm-hmm. Gushers and yep. the um, yeah, that's not in the book anymore. No, mm-hmm. man, they took it out. Oh, huh. I wonder why. I guess they feel like they didn't need to. I guess they feel like that was too detailed. They didn't need to know. I think I'm. I think I'm going to keep that myself. Yeah, and just keep going, going over it anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, non-pathogenic, pathogenic. I see the staphylococci. What book you looking in? I'm in. I'm in. Um. Oh, I see it. I see the staphylococci. Foundation. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, that's it. That's so all they have. Infa- that's all they have is staphylococci. Yeah. Yep. No, so no bacilli, no spirilla. No, nope. you mean to tell me I can't have my little um barbecue <laughs> Frito chips <laughs> for the spiral for spirilla? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Wait a minute, and I love doing the gushers because baby, when I tell them put that gusher in their mouth and then let it squirt out, and then mm-hmm. I'm like, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's, that's so I know they be like. Uh. I would never look at that gusher the same. Oh man, I can't believe they took it out of the Yeah, they took it out. Okay, but honestly though, that it it low key kind of helps because it was difficult for them to remember all of that. So if yeah, you took it, it out the book, it was. I, I to me, that know. says that they don't need to know all of it if they took it out the book. Right, exactly. That's what I'm like. I mean, obviously, it's not on the test because I was just ready to say, I don't right. think it's on the state board. Yeah, it's it, not. It, it not if be. they took it out the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, so I'm, I'm actually <laughs> not mad at that. Because I, I, mean, I really don't remember it being on my test. You yeah, know I mean? Exactly. I mean, it was a fun activity, though. That's what make you want to yeah. just keep it because it was a right, cute but, activity. But it's I'm like okay a, with 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 not. Uh, uh, it's like, oh, well, on. keep it moving. But maybe maybe we can just remix it a little bit and do that same type of activity, but just do that like with the bacteria, viruses, parasites, mm-hmm. fungi, and just have a different little snack Farm item yeah. for those yeah. main categories, and then that can, because you know if they eating something that's all that's automatically going to help them, mm-hmm. rem, you remember. know, be able to remember. Mm-hmm. So maybe we can do something like that where we just have you know a gusher for the bacteria, and then you know something else for the viruses and, you know mm-hmm. and then we can you know give give them those little snacks but then of course we have some type of we go into detail about each one and break it down and talk about each one and stuff so we can still we can still be creative and use our little snacks and do it like that mm-hmm. true yeah well i'm still gonna have my snack, snack regardless <laughs> <laughs> I keep me some snacks. <laughs> so that's 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 cool to be able to do it mm. like that. And then like I show some little videos. Like y'all know if you've seen on my um YouTube page on one of those playlists, just some little videos. So like under the infection control mm-hmm. playlist. There's some little cartoon videos on there yeah. that I like to show, but I think they're so cute and they really are helpful to help break it down into, it's kind of more understandable, even in my mind, honestly, for adults. I mean, of course it is a cartoon, but sometimes we need stuff to be broken down in a more simpler form Mm -hmm. and just looking at a little short Mm -hmm. cartoon clip can help us to remember. So whether you're teaching the kids in the high school or the adults, just by showing them that short little four minute clip can really help them to, you know, retain that information better. Mm-hmm. So if you I have, agree if it's, you have been seen, many a time I'm learning. Yes, definitely. And it helps And I'm like talk to me like I'm five. <laughs> Cause I don't understand. So yeah. Yeah, so oh, that's um fun. I mean, hmm. if you haven't, if you haven't seen them, go look at some of those little clips on the YouTube page. Uh, yes, I think I um I do utilize YouTube the little uh, cartoon clips and stuff. Mm-hmm. I um have them um watch those. Yeah, it's helpful. It really and I just post them in there um uh, because we use Canvas and I mm-hmm. post them for each week or whatever um and um let tell let them know go ahead and go watch the videos. 
um, before we go over the assignment. Yeah. That's cool. I like to watch them in class. I just like to watch them in class because I feel like it just kind of breaks up all of the constant, you know, talking. It just kind of breaks it up. It's a, yeah. another little activity to break it up. So I may show a little clip in class, have a little turn and talk and have them to, you know, share some information that they got out of the clip with a partner or whatever. And then we may, you know, just discuss it as a class and then move on. But I think it's a good idea to um just do it with, regardless of however you do it, whether you have them watching on their own or um show them in class. It's a good idea. I think another good idea um would be like um especially around the time, especially when the uh pandemic hit and we went, you know, we did go back to school. Mm -hmm. Uh which I didn't get a chance for them to do that to make a 3D um illustration of the coronavirus as far as how it looks and everything and um and i was gonna let them do it by using like the styrofoam like ball that you can get like in arts and crafts mm -hmm. they can start out like that and just create their own little, um replica of the coronavirus okay i like that and provide details and you know things to go along with it yeah that's good Okay, this sounds good. Let's see, what else? I know like for this chapter, I do like a lot of, um, you know, like little cahoots and little quizzes games to just kind of help break up all <laughs> of the information and just kind of help, you know, just do those short um, quick checks or check for understandings to make sure that they have the information because it's so much information in infection control yeah. so that's one thing that i know i'm constantly doing we're doing you know mm -hmm. little hoops at the end of class or at the end of a lesson or the quizzes have y'all have y'all done the quizzes quizzes i really don't know how to say it but the, um you talking about the quizlet mm -mm. quizzes it's q-u-i-z-i-z-z -Z. Mm -mm. have y'all heard of that one Mm -mm. I'm getting ready to show y'all what it looks like. It's a cool little um, it's cool. And you know, a lot of times you can find some of these already created by other cosmetology instructors. I just kind of go through and check and make sure that they make sense and make sure they're accurate and not use it. <laughs> now, I do that with um, is it word? I think it's um word mint. I never heard of that one. What is it called? I think it's word mint and um. You can go on and create like puzzles, crossword puzzles, um, quizzes, uh, like um, tests. But however, if you put in like beauty and health or something like that, uh -huh. um, cosmetology instructors, they already have, it's already stuff on there that you can mm -hmm. probably go through and kind of use if you want to. Okay. It's called What's Word that? Mint. Word Mint, M I N T? Mm hmm. Okay. Sounds good. I have to look into that. I'm getting ready to show y'all the quizzes though. And y'all tell me if y'all have used this before. Um, can y'all see my screen right now? What y'all see? Mm -hmm. I can see it. Oh, it says quizzes up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see if I can. This is not gonna be the right login. Let me see if I can log in with uh, <clears throat> I really don't even know my password. Uh oh. Okay, that's it. Okay, so let me show you because I got a whole bunch of them saved. So like this is this is just an example of one that I have for infection control, but like they can join it and it's just the questions on here, but it when they join it with the code, it's real mm -hmm. cute looking and they can go through and <clears throat> practice it like a little test and it'll let them have like redemption questions and stuff. So if they mm -hmm. miss it, it'll show them again. And um like in between it shows little memes and stuff like in between the questions. So oh, it's cute okay. for the kids. So it's just questions on there. It could be multiple choice. You can do true or false. 
and it's different ways that you can um assign the games as well so they'll let you do it like this but they also have it where you can do it like flashcards if you want to do it together as a class in in different little ways that you can do it so this is a cute little site y'all if you okay. are looking for another little type of game i know i'm forever looking for some type of way to interact mm -hmm. with, i mean you know some type of little games to play with them and i i think they get tired of kahoot you know because i think yeah. at this point every teacher Everybody know about Kahoot. has yeah. done Kahoot. <laughs> yes. So doing something, uh, you know, some different little games is always cool. Anybody else have different like game sites that y'all use to create? Um uh, what about the I know one time I was using the well of course the Jeff uh, Jeopardy. And um, oh, yeah. I think mm -hmm. now I uh, said I was gonna do the family feud. Yes, I we love to do. Did I spell Jeopardy wrong? <laughs> we love to do the family feud. The family feud when it's really uh fun. The only thing about mm -hmm. it is you have to be a little more detailed with it because, like, when like for example, like if it's like um this one of the principles of hair design, you know, yeah. and they say. Um, I can't even think of the principles right now, but they say design texture or something. And they just say design texture, but do they know what that is? Uh -huh. So when we have them to say it, they have to also tell us, okay, now what is that? Mm -hmm. So that they're not just saying something because they memorize that off the top of their head, but they don't know what it is. Exactly. So yeah, but that is good. The Family Feud is good. It's fun. They they actually end up really like it. Be competitive sometimes. <laughs> like Lord, <laughs> yes. I have a little Jeopardy website. What what do y'all what you play Jeopardy on, Candy? Like, is it actually? Um, I haven't used it in a while, but I think I forgot where I found it at. I don't know if I. You might be able to just like Google. Okay. Um, me, it's one that I use. I have to look it up. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Y'all may like it. Heck, Jeopardy. Uh, I know I have a little website. I got to find it. Oh, here it is. This one. It's called Play Factile or Factor, whatever dot com. Okay. But this is it. This is a little Jeopardy thing. You can make your little free account. And it'll give you like three games or something you can play for free. You know how that is. But it's cute. They give you the little options at the bottom that you can let them let your <laughs> students pick from and be mm -hmm. their little group and then play it. And it's literally just like Jeopardy. So this is a good website. I'll put it on the um PowerPoint. Okay, y'all, that's some games. Is it anything else that y'all do during infection control chapter that y'all can think of off the top of your head and y'all want to talk about? I usually spend at least, it seems like it's a few weeks on infection control. Yeah, me too. I mean, I really do, but it is, I, I, I will admit, it is a lot of, I mean, we try to make it engaging in a lot of different little um you know short activities for them to do and I know I, it's a lot of stuff on there that I do but I won't say that it's all fun mm -hmm. you know I mean some of it and you can't really I don't know how to make it fun <laughs> you know it's like I do the best I can to try to make it interactive and engaging and fun but it's not always it's just not always like that it's the um So what do you you all do like with the um the blood exposure procedure? Um we have because the blood exposure is on their state board, the practical, mm -hmm. we have them we go through it, actually okay. like go through the whole procedure and everybody has to do it because like I said, it's on you know, their state board. So we'll have them set up. 
like they go in the stable or like everything in the Ziploc bag, you know, pull out your Ziploc bags and just go through the process of how they should handle the exposure incidents. And I like that they have it in the book now, like, you know, just mm-hmm. so specific what to do if it's an exposure incident because you hurt yourself versus mm-hmm. a client. That's good. They they needed that. That wasn't in the book. Do y'all have your students to like purchase um like as far as for cleaning and disinfection? Do you have them to purchase something that they use to disinfect their tools and implements, like a container or something where they have to mix their marbicide and make sure that they're disinfecting their tools and implements or stuff? Well, I usually uh we usually have that provided. Um so each the way I have my um the each station have a uh, spray bottle of barbicide. And so um who's ever at the station or assigned to that particular station, their responsibility is to make sure that it doesn't run out. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, and I try to go ahead and um, pre-mix the barbicide and put it in a, mm-hmm. a gallon jug so I didn't have to do it. Before. Yeah, we have that too. And we have the, <laughs> you know, where it's marbicide and stuff available and at all the stations and stuff. But I mean, like, but your students, you don't, they don't get their own kits. Y'all have no, everything. Not yeah. Yet. Yeah. See, ours is a little bit different because our students do get their own kits. So in all of the kits, they have the same stuff. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to like disinfection at the end, you know, we have the big tub where, where we can mix the marvicide and they can put the um stuff in it, but it, it gets too complicated because they all have the same stuff. And if they're all putting their marvicide in the same, so we'll have them to just buy like a little shoebox size. Mm-hmm container and then they can bring it put their name on it and when it's time to disinfect you know put your marvicide in there disinfect your stuff Mm -hmm. and just you know treat it like that and then they just keep them in their locker do y'all have lockers um i don't have them in my particular classroom um because and actually they we have lockers lockers for the students but since covid they haven't let the students use Use the lockers Mm-hmm. Really? I don't even utilize the lockers anymore. Hmm. Does anybody else have does anyone else have lockers in their lab? In their salon? No, not in the salon. No. Really? Mm-mm. I think that now it was mandatory. Now when I was at the actual beauty school and when I taught at the um technical college, we had to have the students had to have lockers. Yeah. They should definitely have lockers. I mean in my mind. They should have to have lockers. We just order some more lockers because my <laughs> my partner's so particular, so she don't want them to have their backpacks in the classroom. She like it's too much clutter, so they have a locker for their backpack, their personal items, and then they have a locker for their kits and stuff like that. So, yeah. and so I think, and then with that, because like I say, I have like especially like up to maybe between 25 to 30 students so that'll be kind of to put all the lockers in my area i have a big area but yeah it's um it'll be too much it'll be too time um too unless i can utilize the lockers right outside of my i might i might try to get that going though because yeah. i have lockers right in front of my door right outside my Girl, door. yeah see if you can thank you my no way <laughs> You need lockers for, uh, you know, for your students, for sure. That'll be good for you to be able to do. Were you getting ready to say something, Ms. Douglas? No, I'm saying Georgia State Board says that we should have lockers. Mm-hmm. But high schools, get because we're technically not fully governed by state board, they aren't required to give us lockers, mm-hmm. even though it says that we should for each student right yeah because i trust me i've been trying to get them yeah they they need lockers what the heck okay um all this other stuff y'all like i'm looking at the back where it demonstrates safe work practices and safety precautions and then they it breaks down like water tools and appliances equipment and fixtures ventilation it has bullet points under each each thing how would you go over that information? Which one? What? What are you looking at now? So I'm starting on page um 
129, where it breaks down into um, just safe work practices and safety precautions and stuff that they should know. And it has, you know, water, tools and appliances, fire extinguishers, a tire, like all of that information. And I'm just curious to know how would, how do you go over sections where it has like a lot of information, a lot of bullet points and stuff that they should know, but you don't want to just read it to them or, you know, like how do you cover that type of information? Um, sometimes I kind of go through, even if I have to create like a, um, like a basic worksheet, mm -hmm. you kind of, take some points out of there mm -hmm. and on the fill in the blank. I'm always making them work now. So yeah. I have to go do some fill in the blank or whatever. Exactly. To put in, you know, to hit the key points of it. Um yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Just like as a little note taking reference. Just mm -hmm. let give them a little fill in the blank and go through the information. And I would personally I would probably break them into groups and just assign them each a section on the worksheet mm -hmm. so that we can, you know, kind of go through it together at the end, let each group kind of go through their own bullet points and let everybody else be filling in as the group is going over the information just mm -hmm. to kind of make it a little more engaging because I just don't know how to, you know, I think that would just be a little more engaging than just letting everybody sit down with a book and just, exactly. yeah. Okay, well, this is funny because this chapter is so long, but it's it's also like we just <laughs> we we doing the best we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can get so uh complicated trying to make it not be so not be boring and be more engaging when it's a chapter like this. And the kids understand that we get overwhelmed with infection control too because there's so many terms. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like, like I said, as many terms as it was in yeah. the old black book, in this book, but it's still it's still a lot of vocabulary that they have to know. When you flipping through their vocabulary, it's like, Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just a lot. When we get to like uh tinea capitis, tinea barbe, the different types of fungus and um stuff like that, I would let I would like break that down. I like to do group activities and stuff, so I would like put them in little groups and let them come up with a little presentation to um mm -hmm. present their bacteria or fungus or whatever it was. So they always kind of enjoy that just because it's gross and they be like you know just... yeah, I love to show them the uh, illustrations too yeah thank you so <laughs> gross <now. laughs> but yeah I would do something like that for uh for the fungus the fungus or the viruses and stuff like that but and they can also use um because I was looking at the the procedure for hand washing probably like use that as a uh, short assessment for them to have to um take and pass yeah yeah for sure i i know like um i was using mind tap so i would show them the hand washing uh video and just kind of have them do a little but I, I would normally have them do something with that i would have them oh that's what i would do for that hand washing section i would normally have them with a partner and I would say, write the steps for washing your hands. And I just mm -hmm. want to see what they're going to, how you wash your hands, what should you do? And I would I would kind of break it down. I'd tell them, give me three do's for washing your hands, three things mm -hmm. that you should do. And then give me three things that you should not do when washing your hands, you know? Okay. So I let them do that. And then we just kind of talk about the steps for how they wash their hands just normally and then, of course, I'll show them the video and let them kind of see what they should actually do. How long should you wash your hands? Mm -hmm. What type of soap should you be using? Do you touch the door after you wash your, you know, just stuff like that. And we'll go over the actual process. Mm -hmm. So that was a way. Because, you know, they're always like, well, 
you should not use this or you should do this. You know, they get they get a little engaged with that. So that is something um, I do for the hand washing part. So, and also what about like, um, <clears throat> now I, I think I did this maybe once or twice as far as the first aid, just the basic first, rendering basic first aid um, and kind of let them, like I say, put them in um, groups or whatever or have a partner and let them go through the basic first aid as far as rendering aid, you know, using a Band-Aid, cleaning first, properly cleaning, then applying the um, bandage or whatever. Yeah, we would normally do that too. We But we will normally do that like in safety training, mm -hmm. which we'll normally do like in cosmetology one, it'll be like one of the first things we do when we go over first aid and safety. But okay. we would normally use, um, not my lady, the other one. Salon fundamentals, yeah, because okay. they they have the safety. Like Milady didn't really have safety, uh, you know, stuff in there in the book. Like it didn't have what you're supposed to do if you get a cut or what you're supposed to do. Like it didn't really have that broken down like it does in salon fundamentals. So every time we do salon safety and our safety training, we really ended up using the salon fundamentals book. Okay. And we would let them, you know, go through that process of what they're supposed to do if they, um, you know, like you said, just kind of rendering first aid and walking through all of those different scenarios. Yeah, we do that. Like, that's one of the first things that we do in Cosmetology 1 before they can do anything else. We go through the safety and first aid. <clears throat> yeah. Anybody else? How do y'all do? How do you handle... Uh, safety first aid yeah in cause one here we um do general it's called general safety here and yeah we go through you know the fire extinguisher and you know all of that the cords and you know things like that so mm -hmm. i have mine to do um a poster uh get in the group and do a poster and i give i assign them um a different uh topic and they have to come up with a, a poster and tell them what's what the um the uh safety precautions on the poster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do something uh very similar to that too. And let them do little safety posters and stuff like that. And we hang them all over the lab. <laughs> so yeah, that's we let them do lab that decor. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes for real and they still up right now needs to go to, we need to take some old ones down we have the last two years is up <laughs> <laughs> we have to take them down for this year okay y'all i think we i mean you know we did the best we could for infection control we came up with a few things that were that were pretty cool to be able to to do or just share some of the stuff that we do. I know that can be helpful for some. That's the best I can I can think of for infection control. I will look though. I'll look through some of my stuff. And so the next time we meet, what y'all want to talk about next? We need to do Skills USA. We need to talk about Skills USA. Yes, we do. <laughs> That's y'all want that to be our next one. Are any of y'all doing Skills USA with your students? Is it still yeah. called Skills USA? Is the USA still on it? Yes. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's let's do some meetings with skills, and I don't know how it would if it would be the same since we're in different states. Do the are the things well, the same? The qualifications. The national guidelines, um, typically every state should be taking the national guidelines and trickling it down to their state. Okay. So as long as we know the national standards, we should be able to collaborate. Okay. Sounds good. So maybe our next meeting can be Skills USA. But if we're gonna do our next meeting, Skills USA, I need to get some folks on here who know what they're talking about because Miss Douglas, I'm gonna need you on her <laughs> on Monday. <laughs> and it's um a few other ladies that I know that are um you know that are really involved in skills usa that i need to try to get on this meeting or else we're gonna be sitting here looking at each other crazy candace because <laughs> mm -mm, i'm gonna be emailing miss Douglas. 
Uh-huh. But I got to put it on my calendar so I don't forget. Yes, put it on your calendar. Fuck. Wait, is yeah, July 3rd? Is that a good day? I mean, I know it's right before the holiday. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The whole week. July 3rd, not the 20th. Yeah, the 3rd. <laughs> okay. If we can do, I'm a, I'm gonna try my best to get some yeah, others. I don't me. have anything on um set up for July third. Okay, I don't either. So that should be a good day for me as well. I'm, I'm. We're gonna do our best to try to get some skills stuff going because I don't have absolutely no clue as to nothing about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. Well, I did a, a professional development for the cause teachers here in Georgia with skills you say so I have my slides from that this needs to be your meeting (laughs) (laughs) I said this needs to be your meeting then okay that's fine (laughs) look I'm giving you some responsibility Miss Douglas (laughs) that's that's fine I already have the slides ready so that's fine that would be perfect so um like I said, next Monday, I'm going to put the word out and I am going to try to get a few more people on that know a little more information that can jump in and just help us collab, of course. But that'll be great to be do able you to have a chapter started already or do y'all need to start? We have a chapter started as far as I, my, my partner said we have a chapter. I don't know nothing about it or where it's at or how to find it or what's the number. Nothing. I just, <laughs> but we do have one because we okay. used to do skills th- before I came. They used to do skills, but I just didn't continue because I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know how to, you know, go about it. So, and I've had, um, you know, a fellow, uh, one of my coworkers, she, she's the um, graphic design teacher. And so she, her students, they are involved in Skills USA. They go to the, you know, the nationals and all that stuff. And um, she did print out the stuff for me for cosmetology. And so it's like every time she explained it to me, I'm like, I still don't get it. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah. Need to be a little more visual and be able to get it broken. Bro- hmm. I said, no problem. We can break it down next week. Okay. That sounds great. Okay, y'all. Well, thank you all for jumping on. I appreciate the collaboration. Yes, I really appreciate it. And we'll meet again on Monday. Talk about skills. We'll be. See everybody on Monday. All All right. right. Bye, y'all. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.